So uh, I wanted to begin. Um, my job is basically to uh, be awake this early in the morning. I'm usually very funny when I haven't had much sleep. Um, and uh, this is always an exciting week, the week of I.O. So um, uh, I actually wrote my name in the notes just so I'd remember to say them, because this is, this is usually a time when we're just running around trying to get everything ready for tomorrow. And this is always a really fun thing to do to meet with you guys today. And uh, so I'm really excited that Bill asked me to be here. Um, I've been doing this for a really long time. Uh, I've been working to make Android development better, uh, delivering some modestly memorable presenta presentations and occasionally maybe more memorable looks over the years. I particularly like the Jean Valjean look I have on the, on the, on the you know, left over there. Um, so the first thing I like to do is summarize all the things that I thought were cool about the, the day we had at GDC. And so how many people, by a show of hands, actually attended and saw all of our GDC sessions? All right. Um, well, that's uh, about usually about what I expected. That's why I do this. Um, because, um, and I, do, I group these to kind of help myself. Um, so we talked about a lot of things about what Google Play is doing. So uh, I'll put my Google Play hat on. Um, we mentioned that uh, in the last 12 months, the number of Android users who installed a game more than doubled compared to the previous year. And 40% of that growth is coming from these emerging markets, uh, such as uh, Brazil and India, Indonesia, and Mexico. Um, we recognized that because about half of mobile gamers are women, um, we kicked off an initiative to celebrate and empower women as players and creators. We did a lot of stuff inside the store to actually uh, improve the way that people find games. Uh, we improved search on play uh, with personalization such as the search for finance you see on the left and recommendations on the right. Uh, one of the things we've done is we've actually elevated games as its own destination uh, in Google Play. And that's really important because it's a foundation for creating a lot of experiences in the store that are unique to games, such as more immersive recommendations, like showing trailers or screenshots of actual gameplay. And we also want to give users a lot more uh, control on how they explore the catalog. And one of the things that I'm particularly excited about is that we now have a premium section, um, which is highlighting only paid games. And we launched that in Q4, and we're refreshing it regularly. And this is also really good because as you all know, we actually have strike through sale pricing now. So it's a good way for, for users to go and find this content that they really want. And we see a lot of engagement with um, uh, visitors scrolling deep into the page looking at premium content. Um, within our recommendations, we're also clearly highlighting the best of the catalog. And one of the major focuses of this year is actually creating new editorial experiences, including like this rich long form content. Um, that explains to users actually what we love about the game. So not only do you see editor's choice, but you actually see a couple of things about why we actually did that. And these articles are now live in 17 countries. Um, and discovering new games is really important not just to um, uh, developers, but to gamers. And uh, so similar to the way we did with Premium, we actually rolled out a section dedicated to high quality new games. And this is pretty cool. We're, this is a pre-registration feature. Um, and uh, this is, this is um, called Milestone Rewards here for pre-registration, which is, which is pretty awesome. So um, uh, this is a way in which we're incentivizing people to actually go and pre-register for games, and that is really great. Um, it also should be a, de a destination for people to find out about the games they have. You know, we spend so much time in live ops trying to drive people back to content. That's, that's the way the game world works now. And so um, we've actually started to highlight major in-game events and these live operations through the way we're doing store featuring. And they're exploring a lot of ways to use live ops. And this has been a pilot program for uh, several months, and we're seeing promising results. And so hopefully uh, more of you will get to take part of it. Um, we've, we've, uh, one of the things we're also piloting is these updates to these details pages, which is pretty cool. Um, so this, this will actually change depending on whether or not um, the user actually has the game installed, so you'll actually see things that are new and interesting, potentially you know, that are more important if you already have the game installed and you may have run it for a while, or if you, if you are going to install it, um, potentially then you'll see things that'll actually be more attractive, like videos and stuff like that. So once again, it's trying to personalize the store, trying to get people to go and re-engage in co in, with content through the Play Store. Um, we also fully redesigned the Play Games app um, which looks really nice. Um, and this allows to let users really launch the games they've installed. And we've added a, a number of game re-engagement features. And so in addition to tracking leaderboards and achievements, users can now see like live ops, related news, and game YouTube videos. And we also have a new arcade prominently uh, features this, this tag browsing experience to help people find their favorite game, which is pretty cool. 
And uh, these updates are all uh, leading to a lot of user engagement. And that's very uh, important as we continue to invest in this surface this year. Um, and we also added this little thing that maybe have you have seen called Google Play Instant, um, which, uh, has, uh, is, is, which is really, really fun to play with, and I highly recommend trying it out. And uh, when you click Try Now, you actually get the native application. So if you played this with Clash, it's really cool. It's a great experience. And you get an option to install. So you get a whole bunch of levels. Of, a lot of these games give you a lot of gameplay and then really, really drive the ability for people to very, very quickly jump into games and install them right away. So that's, um, those are all kind of the promotion things we're doing. Those help people discover games. Those help people re-engage in content. Um, we're also doing a lot of things um, with uh, testing on play. Um, this is something I'm really excited about. We have internal test tracks. So one of the, ch one of the challenges, obviously, is you upload. Um, it, goes through, it goes through a process before it actually goes live. With internal test track, uh, with 100 users, um, you can, things go live very, very quickly, so you can iterate really, really rapidly. You don't have to wait for, for Google Play to spend a lot of time staging things and going through your content, which is great. It makes it really fast to use Play, and I think this is going to really help people. Um, we also have country targeting on per track now, which is, which is awesome. Um, so if you, haven't, if you haven't used this, I'm sure that you'll love it, because this is something people have been asking us for forever. Um, so I'm really excited about that. Um, and this is something that, that's coming soon, I think. Um, I'm not sure exactly when it's coming soon, but um, this actually allows you to use, uh, allows you to create pre-recorded demo loops and use them for pre-launch report, which is uh, pretty slick. You'll see you'll get crash and performance metrics, um, including, including frames per second, and this will hopefully allow you to discover issues even faster and launch with more confidence. Um, I talked a bit about AR Core and what we're doing there. Um, it's currently compatible with a lot of devices, which is great, and more are coming on the way. We have a lot of partners involved with uh, AR Core, um, bringing the power of AR to game developers, which is something that I think is going to be pretty fun. Um, and um, one of the things that's great is it's actually coming to China. So we're actually working to make AR, AR Core work in China, um, working, actually making sure that the product is available through these uh, app stores in China. So uh, with uh, Huawei, Xiaomi, and uh, Samsung. Um, we also have native SDKs for popular IDEs, whether you're using um, Android Studio or uh, Unity, or I don't really think of those as being IDEs, but this is what the slide said, I swear. Um, uh, we also have this thing called Poly. How many people know about Poly? Um, this is a product we have to actually allow people to build and browse um, 3D assets. And so you can find all sorts of stuff on there from the landing a uh, landing model of a space shuttle to uh, apparently a mustache over in the corner. And what's really cool about Poly is that, is that uh, it actually allows you to build these in VR, which is, which is pretty slick. Um, and um, we also added an API. So literally, you can go to Poly, and your app can actually pull assets. Most of these assets are Creative Commons license for free. You can just use them everywhere. And it's really a great way to get started. Um, if you're prototyping games, it's an awesome thing to have. Or, or if you want to have user-generated content and you want to have a source for that, this could be pretty fun. So um, I'm excited about that. Um, we also announced Google Maps Gaming, um, which, is a, which is a pretty big deal. Um, so uh, we have, I have much prettier slides here. Hopefully, they won't crash. Um, which uh, goes through um, a little bit of uh, the kind of things you can do. You can actually, you can actually have game in the real world. You can completely customize this game world with all sorts of fill parks with trees, turned rivers into lava flows. You can customize uh, uh, clusters and te uh, textures or swap out entire features for prefabs to create this kind of world scale environment um, that's true to the look and feel of your game. So. Uh, it really is pretty awesome. I've been excited that we're announcing this. Um, we've launched this, I should say. Um, and you can also design gameplay around real places. So you can, uh, drive your, you can actually drive your players to popular places, take them off the beaten path, um, and um, we actually help you find great places for your unique gameplay anywhere in the world. So, um, and of course, you can deliver these at global scale because it's running on Google's infrastructure. So um, that should give you a little bit of peace of mind. We've done a lot of stuff with Firebase for game developers, too. Um, you know, probably, as you see, you know, Firebase includes all of these things. I'm not going to talk about all of them because I have like five minutes. But um, this is our mobile uh, development platform. It's a single SDK that combines tons and tons of stuff, and they really, they really work together well. 
Um, so a couple, the, probably the most, the, game, the feature that's most useful other than maybe Crashlytics is Google Analytics for Firebase. Um, this is, this product has really, really grown a lot recently. I don't know if you, if you play with it. Um, it, it has fantastic real-time support now. It, um, it's wonderful when you're going and debugging to see those analytics, that analytics data flowing in really quickly. Um, and uh, if you're selling a premium game, it's really important, of course, to understand, um, uh, or a freemium game, it's really, understand, uh, really important to understand how people are, are engaging with your content, and as uh, so you can measure all this behavior at no cost to you. Um, we added this predictions API. Um, this is uh, something we released in beta last year, and this actually allows you uh, to, this uh, builds dynamic user groups based upon predicted behavior, which is pretty slick. So um, you can actually then target, target these groups using Firebase Cloud Messaging and a product called Remote Config. And out of the box, you find you know, predictions for like users who are predicted to soft churn, users who are predicted to not churn, spend or not spend, all that sort of thing, which, is, which, is, uh, which I think is really important. Um, we also, as I said, allow you to, ex to uh, um, experiment with uh, these users with remote config. So in this case, this is uh, from Mecca Hamster, which is one of our samples. But you can see at how this works um, depending on whether someone is going to churn or whether someone is, is a dedicated player, we can offer them different incentives to continue playing. And, um, and, you, and you can use this to change any parameters in your game, like UI, ad placement, difficulty, whatever you can imagine. And out of the box, we actually have this web-based composer for notifications. We also have a REST API, so you can integrate Firebase Cloud Messaging into tools that you maintain. And um, we also have rewarded ad formats. Yay! Um, uh, so that's, that's really great. Um, this is obviously, um, we have rewarded playables, which involves you know, try before you buy. Um, and we also have multiple, rewarded with multiple options. So this, this uh, uh, gives the ability to, uh, to, to watch an ad and then choose kind of what reward the user is going to get. And you know, this is important. We know, that the, we know that ads are important for developers to uh, uh, to make sure they're, they're monetizing a lot of these players that uh, uh, are very dedicated. Um, we also have um, this open bidding beta that we're doing, um, which takes the promise of monetization to the next level, uh, allows people to actually, uh, uh, allows network partners to uh, bid for inventory simultaneously and in real time. So that is pretty cool. And then the final thing I wanted to mention that we talked about is that, is that um, we've been really working on making uh, Google Cloud work really, really fast for people that are doing things like um, real-time PvP. And so Dragon Ball Legends announced that they, are, that they are using it for that. And I thought that was pretty cool. So I thought I'd end with that from my component of the slides and um, leave Bill to come up here and tell us a little bit about what he does with, develop, with partner developer relations and what they do. So hopefully this will continue to work for him. So thank you, everyone. <laughs>